Hello everyone. I am Vivesh Chen, a research scholar at NCRI DAFR, and today we are in conversations with Banali Das. Banali completed her PhD at NCRI in 2021, and she recently won the prestigious Justice D. G. Oak Award for outstanding thesis in the field of astronomy. Many congratulations, Banali. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> to give you a brief, brief introduction about Banali. So Bernali hails from Patshala from Assam. She completed her B.Sc. in Physics from Hansraj College in New Delhi in 2014, and then she did her M.Sc. in Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, from in 2016. After that, she joined NCRI and she did her Ph.D. with Professor Poonam Chandra on coherent radio emission from hot magnetic stars. Currently, Bernali is a postdoctoral fellow at University of Delaware, working on emissions from hot magnetic stars. So, today we have Bernali, with whom we'll talk about uh, her work, her experience at NCRA, and what plans she has for her future. So, let's start with your work. So, can you tell us about this award-winning work uh, of yours that you did during PhD at NCRA? Sure, sure. So uh, this was, as you already mentioned, the title. It was on coherent radio emission from hot magnetic stars. So let me first uh, explain the the meaning of the words in the title. So hot magnetic stars. These are stars which are much bigger, hotter, and brighter than our sun. And approximately ten percent of them have large scale magnetic field, which are again much more stronger than we. Uh, on an average, see on the sun, and also, of course, much stronger than what we see on our Earth. And because uh, these stars are so bright and they have such strong magnetic field, so we get to see some so some unique uh, physical phenomena that takes place surrounding these stars, which leads to different kinds of emission across the the a wide uh, range of the electromagnetic spectrum. So this is the particular kind of radio emission on which I worked on that was first discovered in the year two thousand. And then there was, uh, I think there were closely twenty uh, years almost where and people were not able to find any other hot magnetic star producing this kind of emission. So that was a puzzle, and that was this puzzle actually uh, was the driving uh, question behind uh, my PhD project because theoretically we knew what ingredients are required to produce that emission, that kind of radio emission, and hot magnetic stars they seemingly have everything. Yet apparently there is just one. People could find just one in 20 years. So we we kind of wanted to find out what is that X factor that makes a hot magnetic star capable of producing that emission. So we, for the first time, uh, conducted a systematic survey using the upgraded GMRT, and uh, and we by within three years we ended up discovering. Uh, Ten more stars, so which at the time constituted more than seventy percent of the sample of hot magnetic star producing ECME, and uh, it's kind of a uh, bit uh, amusing to me that we ended up discovering that indeed this phenomena actually is actually pretty ubiquitous amongst the hot magnetic stars, and simultaneously we are also conducting uh, observations to characterize this emission. And what we discovered is that this emission actually can give us much more information about the stars than what had been thought before. So this kind of uh, uh, increases the, the the need to study this emission more and more in the future. So th these two are the main uh, result from my thesis. Yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome. Thank you for explaining us so nicely. But so you did this work uh, in NCRA during your five years stay in. During your five years stay, so how was your experience at NCRA? Any particular incidents, memorable incidents, incidents that you can recall? It was uh, there are of course some ups and downs, which I think is the case with everyone. There are some times when we feel like, oh, this thing is not working, or we are not getting any result. So those are there, of course, but overall it was quite smooth. And I have to, I must be thankful to my supervisor Poonam Chandra and my office mate, of course. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I would say one memorable incident. And at the time, actually, I haven't even joined for my PhD with Poonam, but I was doing my uh, first grad school project with Poonam. And uh, uh, okay, maybe I'll explain a bit more. So in, a, in, in when we observe with the GMRT, and my observations were like kind of we have to say, okay, observe this star at this particular time. 
and time has different units. Like you, you guys are in India, so it's IST, but I am in US, so I'm, I'm following Eastern Standard Time. So you, saying that observe it from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. is not enough. You have to say whether it is IST or LST or UTC, whatever. So I didn't have that concept in mind. In my mind, it was all IST everywhere. So I ended up say I, I calculated the time in UTC, gave the time in LST, and the observations were was ruined completely. So when I discovered it, I went to Poonam and I apologized a lot. And to my surprise, she was not worried about the observation at all. She was worried about me. She came to my office and said, oh, don't worry about the work. You go and have fish curry and rice. You should, you should, you should kind of try, try your best to cheer up yourself. So, so that was how supportive Poonam was throughout my PhD. So yeah, that is one incident which I, I find it uh, fun and yeah, that kind of described how Poonam, how caring she was throughout my uh, my PhD life. Yeah, and that that definitely was the the most important factor to make my PhD life enjoyable. Definitely. Oh, nice, nice. So you are saying that even during the hectic life of PhD, you had these times where you could refresh yourself. So yes. Tell us, can you tell us more about it? Do you want to know what I do in my free time or what I do to regain my energy? Like, what's the question? Whichever is more controversial. <laughs> okay, let me tell you. Uh, I can tell you both and you can maybe let her choose which one you want to give. <laughs> So yeah, so if I am feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm very tired, but I have to do it now. So if it is before lunchtime, I'll go to the canteen and have a cup of coffee or tea, tea and, and chat with friends. If it is like after lunchtime, but before 3 p.m., I'll just have a nap. If it is after 3 p.m., but after between 3 and 6 p.m., I'll again go to canteen and have a tea or coffee. If it is like after dinner time, but before 11, then I'll just watch YouTube. If it is like after 11, within 12, then I'll just go to sleep. But yeah, in free time, I think my uh, my favorite thing <laughs> was to go to canteen and chat with friends. Well, I also love uh, watching movies, not much on, on, on YouTube, but going to the to the movie hall and watching movies with friends and reading Akasha Christie's book is one of my favorite thing that I, I do. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So do you get these? chances of doing these refreshing activities even in US where you are currently based? Sorry, can you speak a bit louder? I, I could I did not get the question. Yeah, I was saying that do you get to do these refreshing activities even in US? Uh I no not everything. The, the, I missed one very important thing which is like uh going to there is no canteen in my department, unfortunately. There is there is not, we don't have a common lunch time where we go together and can have lunch. We don't have a common tea time. So this is something I really miss here. Like I miss, this is the uh, this is something I really enjoyed in NCR, that we had a common time for, for eating. And it was so much fun to eat with friends. And and I didn't appreciate it when I was at NCR. Now I appreciate it more and more. It was, it was really something that I really miss, yeah. We miss your company as well. <laughs> I hope you are telling the truth. Yeah, this will go unedited on YouTube. Don't worry about it. So, right now you are busy with studying uh, emission from hot magnetic stars in the University of Delaware. So, can you tell us more about your current work and what work you think the future will give direction to it? <laughs> Yeah, so my PhD uh, ended with the, with the realization that this current radio emission, this has the potential to become a unique magnetospheric probe. So we kind of showed some indirect evidence that this can give us some information about the magnetosphere, which no other existing probe can give. So my future research is, is focused on characterization of this. Or not, uh, I'm also continuing the survey for discovering more and more of this MRPs, but my, the focus has been shifted to the characterization part. So otherwise, there is you, know, you have to standardize before before you want to use it as a proof, right? So other thing that I am doing here, like here, uh, I I'm also trying to uh, 
use other kind of magnetospheric emission like X-ray emission and combine them like X-ray optical radio because eventually the object is the same. It's just we are just using different wavelengths. So I, I would, I, in the future, I would like to combine the, all the information in, in optical, in the X-ray and UV and radio, of course, and make a, a complete picture of the magnetosphere. That's the idea. Yeah, I am no, I'm nowhere at that at that position, but this is where I think that I, I'm my future project will end. Wow, well, so yeah, all the best for your future endeavors. Uh, you. One last thing uh, I would want to cover in this conversation is uh, uh, in India, after 10th and 12th, we generally find hesitation among students to take up science in general. So you generally find what? Could you could you repeat? So in India, we see that uh, students have an has have a hesitation to join science, maths, fields in general after class tenth or twelfth. So do you have any suggestion or something which will motivate students uh, who would want to pursue science but are hesitant to do so? Anything related to your experiences in astronomy or physics? Uh, so. Okay, this is a bit tricky question, like, because it is something I haven't felt, the, the hesitation to take up science. I saw the opposite thing. I have seen parents forcing their their their, their uh, children to take up science instead of arts, even though they are not willing to. And uh, what I would say always is that you try your best to kind of figure out whether you like science or not, whether you like problem solving or not. And uh, I think, I'm not sure if it is valid for biology at well. So, so I'm, I'm sorry for my ignorance, but I think uh, like any physics, chemistry, you, you cannot separate maths from science. So in up to class 10, I think people can, one can, in most cases can find out whether they enjoy maths or not. So, try to do what you like so it's it's not i don't think forcing someone to do is is the is is never the good idea so unfortunately i haven't seen anyone who is who likes science but hesitant to to take up science because in my area it's like everybody wants their children to take up science so it's so it's even if the children like if the, the child likes to take up science then it's a good thing then there is no question of it. So it's kind of difficult for me to imagine a situation where the, the student wants to take up science, but is not taking science. So yeah, I, I, my, my, my bottom line is that you should take up what you feel like you are comfortable with and not because someone is telling this is, this is good for your career or something. Well, that is a lovely message for our audience. And do you have anything else you would want to share with our, with our audience from your own experience, from your work? or in general, women in STEM? Uh, I, I have, I think this is probably not a very new message. I just want to say to uh, students, not in class 10 or 12, but say in, in doing undergrads, but we're thinking of doing astronomy. So I have seen many people, they get interested in astronomy after reading popular science books or watching movies, but uh, doing research in astronomy can be a very different experience from what you would expect from from reading those books. So I I would say, before you commit to research, you should you should try to do some to some like to get some experience, practical experience. So how it feels like by by you can apply for different kind of uh, summer projects in different research institutes or something. So if you are thinking of doing research. Uh, try to try your best to first get an experience of what what research is like because I, I i have to say that research is very different from from what my experience till msc it was very different and it, it needs some adjusting to that that idea that you don't know it what what it is going to give what what you are going to get at the end of your of your hard work so sometimes you you are not going to get anything even after you put a lot of effort to it so you have to be uh ready to face the situation. So I would say you, those students who are thinking of pursuing astronomy, you should first make sure that you actually like the, the research part of astronomy by doing different kind of projects that will help you to, I hope that will help you to take an informed decision. <laughs> That's, yeah. Thank you, Vernari. That was a great conversation with you. You learned many things and you gave many important messages for our students as well. 
so thank you for this conversation mm -hmm. try to close now thank you <laughs>